Ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, Mr. Gales. Today I'm going to talk to you about the rule of multiplication and show you how we can use this rule to calculate the chance that two or more independent events will occur together in some specific combination. This is really useful when we do dihybrid problems or, or problems that involve more than three traits at a time because it allows us to look at these problems, these complex problems, as really just a collection of monohybrid problems. We will calculate the probability of each event occurring, in other words, each monohybrid problem um, occurring, and then multiply those probabilities together to end up with the probability that all those events will occur in some specific combination. So the example I want to work through with you here real quickly is um, if we have two parents that are dihybrid, as you can see right over here, right? We have this dihybrid combination. I need to get my pen. All right. So if I have those parent genotypes, what's the probability of ending up with big Y, big Y, big R, big R in the offspring? All right. So um, let's start off by writing out this cross. We're going to write this out, take it from the, the symbols here and write it out into words. So we're going to do big Y, little y, big R, little r times big Y, little y, big R, little r. And we want to know what is the probability of ending up with big Y, big Y, big R, big R. All right. Now, we can certainly do a Punnett square on this one. Um, if we do a Punnett square, we're going to have the big 16 box Punnett square. And we know that that is going to take more time and introduce the pop possibility of error. So instead of doing that, we're going to look at uh, this dihybrid problem as two individual monohybrid problems. So let's start off with our Y's. If we think about this as a monohybrid problem, really what we're looking at is what is the probability of taking that genotype and that genotype, and from those two, ending up with that in the offspring. So I'm going to rewrite this out. Uh, big Y, little y, times big Y, little y. What is the probability of getting big Y, big Y? Now, before we start on this, I want to explain that there are really three ways that you can do this simple problem, right? Um, and when the simplest way that we started off with was to use uh, the good old Punnett square. And there's nothing wrong with using Punnett squares. Uh, they just, you know, you end up taking a little bit more time and you have the possibility that you do something incorrectly. But if you need to do them, go ahead and do them. Uh, the second way that you could approach this problem would be to use the FOIL method, where you're looking at uh, first outside and inside and last combinations to see about the probabilities. And then really the third way, which I would recommend, I think is the easiest, but requires you to memorize, is to use your ratios, the six representative monohybrid problems that we learned at the beginning of the unit. So I'm going to go through here and just kind of demonstrate what each of these would look like. Uh, I'll start off with a Punnett square for this probability. So I'm going to have a big Y and a little y and a big Y and a little y. And when I put together my Punnett square, because each parent has two gametes, I'm going to have two rows and two columns, four total boxes, and I have big Y, big Y, big Y, little y, another big Y, little y, and a little y, little y. So my result here is one fourth. I can also do FOIL uh, to solve this problem, right? FOIL is first, outside, inside, last. So the first in each pair here would be this one. That does meet our big Y, big Y. Uh, the outside would be big Y, little y. That does not work. The inside would be big Y, little y. That does not work. And the last would be the little y, little y, which does not work. So we had one out of four when we used FOIL. And then, of course, the Ratios is just memorizing that when you have uh, two heterozygotes that combine together, the genotypic ratio is 1 to 2 to 1, where the 1 is the homozygous dominant, the 2 is the heterozygous, and the 1 is the homozygous recessive. So no matter how you do this, whether you're using a Punnett square, FOIL, or ratios, what you should get uh, is that the probability of getting big Y, big Y, uh, when you have this cross is one fourth. All right. Uh, so now, if we give myself a little bit room to, more room to work with here, and I'm going to erase uh, at least some of this work, so that we have some some space here. Um, so we had one fourth for the first probability, and now what we want to look at is that second part of the problem, which was the R's. 
right? So we have one fourth for the y's. And I'm going to go back over here and I'll, I'll summarize that one more time. So uh, big Y, little y times big Y, little y. Probability of getting big Y, big Y is one fourth. Now the second problem was big R, little r times big R, little r. Probability of getting big R, big R. Now again, you can use Punnett squares, you can do FOIL, or you can just remember the ratio uh, from the six representative problems, and that would be a one to two to one ratio. So again, the probability of getting big R, big R would be one fourth. And then to figure out the probability that they would occur together in some combination, you multiply them. So one fourth times one fourth, and that's going to give you one sixteenth. And that would be the same probability that you would end up with if you went back to your problem here and did that as a big 16 square Punnett square. You'd have a 1 16th chance. All right, so that's how you use the rule of multiplication. Um, in the next screencast that I do, I'm going to be showing you a couple of more complex problems involving the rule of multiplication and uh, try to help you practice with those. Thank <laughs> you.